and the LLM is called GPT. So in this session, we will be mostly focused on open source large language models. And let's give you a, an overview of functioning of LLMs. So LLM are basically next word completion machine. So for example, let's understand this with an example here. Uh, I have a query capital of, and I feed this query to my large language model to produce basically to generate a whole sentence. So what I will do is I will iterate this over maximum generated tokens, which basically defines number of generated words. So when I feed capital of to my last language model, it will produce the next word. It will basically predict the next word, which will be one of the country like France. And it will be produced based on some probability. So I'll take these, the news generated sentence, capital of France, and then again feed this to the LLM. And the LLM will produce the next word, which is, is. Again, I will feed the whole generated string to the LLM and it will produce capital of France is Paris. So this is a very high level functioning of an LLM. And if you see on the right side, we have this attention neural architecture. So attention is basically what has been powering these large language models. And if you see closely, attention has two different components. On the left side, it's called encoder. And on the right side, it is called decoder. So if you see on the left side, it's accepting inputs and the right side is accepting outputs. And this whole architecture is called an encoder decoder network. Some, some model example of encoder decoder network are T5 model. And the, and the example of encoder only model is BERT. I think most of you might have already used BERT for sentence classification or something like that. Examples of decoder are all these popular LLMs, for example, Llama, Falcon, Freewheely, Mistral. All these models are decoder only models. And these models are generative models. So we will be talking about these decoder only models. And let's talk about fine tuning. So in a regular fine tuning, what we do is we have a pre-trained model. We have a new data set and we update the weights of the pre-trained model based on the output and input of the new data set. So that, that's what basically kind of you do in a, a regular fine tuning. Sometimes you can freeze most of like the base layers or the backbone of the model and then only train the or uh, kind of last layers of the model. Uh, so they are like some variations of the uh, these fine tuning technique. In this session, we are going to talk about this parameter efficient fine tuning using LoRa. LoRa is low rank adaptation method. And uh, if you see this diagram here, I have a pre-trained weights W. Then we add some extra parameters to the model W, A, and W, B. We, so basically we have an extra parameter which has been divided into two different weights, W and WV, and it's divided using something called rank, which is demonstrated here as R. So what's the benefit of breaking this matrix? So let's suppose our new number of parameters were 100 into 500. And when we break this into W and WB, for example, 100 and 100 is 5 and 5 into 500 dimension. Uh, and here, obviously, our rank is 5. So if we see the number of parameters for the broken matrix, it will be 3000, basically 500 plus 5 into 500 uh, and 10, uh, 2500. And the, if we see the number of parameters, if this matrix is whole, basically, if we take a whole matrix of size 100 and 500 dimension, so the number of parameters will be 50,000, which is a lot. So we can reduce the number of parameters using this LoRa technique. 
Uh, and you might think, think like um, if you use LoRa, your performance might decrease. But based on benchmarks, LoRa can achieve and even outperform full fine tuning technique and with only 2% of the total number of training parameters. So, yeah, so we are going to use LoRa for fine tuning our uh, LLM. Now, you might ask, why even fine tune an LLM? So, these LLMs are trained on internet data and it's basically people scrape data from uh, online uh, like Wikipedia or something like that. And those data sets might contain a lot of bias, untruthful data, like and toxicity, like fake news and something like that. Uh, so we can fine tune these LLMs to remove untruthfulness, toxicity and these with certain kind of biases. Also, you can customize the output and tone of the language of the output generation of the LLM by fine tuning it. And privacy and control. This is a very interesting aspect. So um, if you use a ready-made API from OpenAI or some uh, other uh, provider, they might update the model. And after an update, your current prompt might not work because they have basically kind of updated the model. So the API might not give the same result after the mod API update, the new version. So if you use a fine tune LLM, you have the control when you want to update. And even if you update, you can, you will know and you will be able to update the prompts. Also, it's really good for privacy. So at some companies, it's not even allowed to send the data outside of their premises. So you can get a model on your premise, deploy it, and it will be, um, it, your data will be safe. Obviously, these fine tuning LLMs have some challenges. Um, some of the challenges could be like the data set might not be available. It is computationally expensive. Um, and we are going to cover how you can train the model with less computation. But yeah, for certain kind of training, it can be computationally expensive. Also, you might need to retrain with time like um, after a few years, your model might be outdated, even like after a few months, your model can get outdated. So you need to update these models. And if you use um, online provider, like uh, an API, like from OpenAI, OpenAI is responsible for training and updating the model. So there are some pros and cons of fine tuning, um, but let's see about pros. So, I'm going to use an instruction data set for fine tuning LLMs. And this is an example of instruction data set. If you see, these data, this data has few keys, instru instruction, input, and output. So instruction and input is basically what we feed into the model and expect the model output, and it should match with this value. So input acts like context to the model. If you see the second example, identify the odd one out from the group. And our input is carrot, apple, banana, and grape. So the model is expected to generate carrot. So apple, banana, and grape here are fruits, and carrot is, lies in a different set. So this is an example of an instruction data set. And we are using to going to use um, an instruction data set to fine tune our LLM. To fine tune an, a large language model, we need to do these three steps. Set up the model, prepare the data, and fine tune the model. So I'm going to go step by step to do all these three things and show you how we can do it. Uh, for your own uh, custom data set. I'm going to use a library called LegGPT. It's been created by Lightning AI, and it is fully open source, hackable, and you will have the script for pre-training, fine tuning, inference, and even a script for uh, creating the chat bot kind of uh, 
uh, example. So, and this library is Apache 2 license, so you can use it anywhere. Uh, some of the models available with LegGPT are Llama 2, Freewilly, Falcon, Pythia, StableLM, and the latest one from Mr. AI. LegGPT supports a lot of features. Few of the notable features are it has four bit quantized fine tuning and inference. It, the code is very minimal, easy to debug and hack. Everything is really transparent. So if you want to fine tune, you have a script right there. You can adjust anything you want. And if you do not want to adjust, like you want minimum coding, then you can just run the command from your terminal. LegGPT supports TPUs and flash attention to as well, which basically boosts your end-to-end -end training and fine-tuning speed with an efficient implementation of attention network. So we are going to use this data set and the, the data set that I'm going to use is called Dolly2 data set. It was created by employees at Databricks they were very generous to open source this data. And it's basically a human generated data set with different, um, different kind of task and different kind of uh, situations. So for example, if you see the first example here, when did Virgin Australia start operating? And the context for the model here is Virgin Australia. The trading name of Virgin Australia Airlines Private Limited is, there's a, um, typo here as well so yeah it's uh, cool uh, it's a human generated human created data set and this is the expected output uh, Virgin Australia common services on 31st of August 2000 as Virgin Blue with two air cups on a single route cool so I have my data set in a form of CSV I will provide the link to this uh, at the end of my talk so that you can also download this data and like tinker with it. You can try to fine tune, like apply a few different stuff and see what you can achieve. So the first step is to download the model. And if you go to LegGPT, you will see these scripts, download and convert the weights to LegGPT format. So basically you can kind of download um, most of the models from Hugging Face. So the rep ID here basically signifies what you see on Hugging Face Hub as MetaLama and uh, organization and the model name Llama 2, 7 billion parameter. Then we convert this, this way, these weights into LegGPT format using the second script here. And after that, when you inspect your uh, all the files that has been downloaded, you will kind of see these scripts so let model.pth and tokenizer configuration so basically it contains all the stuff that is required to load your model and the tokenizer now once you have loaded your model the next step is you need to prepare your data set so i have that csv that i showed you uh, the dolly 2 csv so to prepare the data set you need to have those columns instruction input and output You need to provide the CSV path. I have provided Databricks dollar 15K. 15K is basically the, the whole data set has 15,000 total number of entries. And checkpoint DIR, the model that I just downloaded, the path to that model. And destination data path, destination path, basically after preparation, this is the folder where I'm going to store my process data. Maximum sequence length, I will cover this later in my slides. So, um, so basically the output of this prepare CSV script is you will have a process data set by process data set. I mean, the data will be tokenized and saved into training and test split set. You can also control and like, uh, this script has some different arguments as well. So you can open the, uh, open the script and see what are the different arguments supported by this script. You can change the model if you want to train on a different, for example, Falcon, you can change the checkpoint DIR, you can customize the script as much as you want.
because it's a very hackable um, repository. After you have prepared your data set, what you need to do is you need to run this script fine tune slash Lua to fine tune the Llama 7 billion parameter base model. And here I have provided the checkpoint directory, the data directory, and the output directory. Checkpoint directory is basically where my I have downloaded my model. Data directory is uh, the destination path what, which I provided when I was preparing my data. And output directory is where I'm going to store all the kind of checkpoints. Like uh, when I'm training, I will save some of the uh, intermediate weights of my model so that if accidentally, uh, like if my training crashes or like anything can happen, so uh, I will have the intermediate steps so I can resume the training later on. And it also stores the logs and useful stuff that you can inspect to see how your model is performing. So after this, you might think that you are all ready to train your model. And when you run the script, you will get CUDA out of memory on most of the GPUs, not every GPU, of course. So I have a question for you before we proceed. How much memory is required to load Llama 7 billion parameter model? And this question is just to load the model, not fine tune it. So I'm going to switch to the portal and see answers. Feel free to comment your answer in the chat. Fourteen GB, twenty GB, sixteen gigabytes, twenty eight. Okay, uh, there is a detailed answer seven billion into two bytes, assuming BF sixteen or basically sixteen bit precision. Oh, yeah, thirty five gigabytes, eight gigabytes, three hundred gigabytes. That's that's cool. <laughs> Uh, 10 megabytes, no, it's not, it will not take that less. Okay, uh, two times the number of parameters. Hmm, okay. Um, then I have a few questions as well. I will take the questions at the end. Okay, 7 billion. FP32, 7 into 4 GB, 28 gigabytes parameters, 13 million parameter as far as no 24. Okay, so let's see the answer. Let me share my screen again. Yeah, we are talking about 7 million parameters. So someone has asked, are we talking about 7 billion? Yes, we are talking about 7 billion parameter llama model. Cool. Uh, let's see the answer. Let me share my screen again. Cool. Um, hopefully my screen is useful. Yeah. So to load, just to load the 7 billion parameter with 32 bit precision, it will take around 28 gigabytes. And for 16 bit precision, it will take 14 gigabytes. So you can see like the 7 billion parameter I think some of the answers were like uh, really good. So basically, you can multiply four, uh, which is one byte. So it is basically 28 gigabytes. And then if you use half precision, it, you will have to multiply with two to get to 14 gigabytes. So just to load this model, you need to have this much of GPU memory. And if you know, I think uh, Google Colab has, I don't know, 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So uh, it's really hard to just to, to train the model. Like it's, it's not only the, you know, model memory. The model takes some the different aspects of model training takes more memory. So it will easily go beyond that. So it's, it's not only the model which takes the memory. Some other components like activation, gradient, optimizer takes the memory. So this is a diagram of memory usage distribution. And this is for a simple transformer model with one layer, 
12 attention head and uh, using Atom optimizer. So you can see the memory distribution, like only the optimizer is going to take like so much of memory more than um, model and activation memory. So yeah, uh, so I got this from this um, cool website. I have linked the source here. Uh, so it, it is very, it is an interactive application. You can change the number of layers, change the hidden size and change the optimizers. And this diagram will update automatically. You can see how it works um later cool um so basically if you want to train or fine tune an llm you need to consider all these memories and you need to optimize for all these things um when you are fine tuning model so it's going to take much more than uh 16 gb with um with 16 bit precision and uh, 32 the 32 bit precision is going to take more than 28 gb uh, but we will optimize it and try to reduce it as less as possible. So let's see how we can do it. Do that. So how to avoid out of memory? One immediate thing that comes into our mind is reduce the batch size, of obviously. So this code on the right side that you see is uh, basically the LoRa script from LedGPT. And it provides the hyperparameter micro batch size. So you can set the micro batch size to a lower number. For, by default, it is four, but you can set it to one. Um, micro batch size is kind of virtual batch size when you cannot set, you know, the original batch size, like the batch size that you want. Suppose if you want to set a batch size of thirty-two, but your GPU memory doesn't allow that. So you can set a batch size of one, and you can iterate four, uh, 32 times. And then only do the uh, and aggregate all the uh, gradients and do the uh, backward propagation at, at the end. So you can read more about that uh, micro uh, batch size. Uh, I will link the blog. So this is something called gradient accumulation. Um, the next step to avoid out of memory is decrease the model's context length. And the model context length is basically it relates to how much the maximum amount of words your model can generate so for example 512 the, your model can your model will be able to generate only 512 number of word tokens so um how do you find a good max sequence length so basically when you have a, a, your data set you can tokenize all your data set, each of the rows in the CSV, and you can kind of plot the distribution like the one on the right top. Um, and you can analyze what is a good number, good sequence length. So for this distribution uh, is plotted for Dolly2 data set. And uh, I think a suitable number is 512. By default, I guess, I think uh, Llama 7 billion model was trained for something around, somewhere around 4,000 maximum sequence length. Uh, maximum sequence length or context length, uh, these are like uh, used interchangeably sometimes. So by default, it is something around 4,000, but we can set it to 512 to reduce the uh, GP memory. The next thing we can do is obviously uh, lower the precision. So Llama 2 was originally trained with B, the uh, binary float 16 precision. Um, it's a, uh, you can say it's a 16 bit precision and uh, the orientation of uh, how you arrange the bits is a bit different from original floating 16 precision. You can, I will also link the uh, block to read more about it in detail, um, but it is basically half of 32-bit precision, which is called full precision. So you can say use half precision, and then quantize the model. So let's say presuppose four-bit quantization. So we can use four-bit quantization to even reduce the total GPU memory required. Uh, it. 4-bit precision also works for inference. So just to show you how much impact it can make. So on the left side, I have without quantization inference of Vikuna 33 billion parameter model. 
and it takes around 60 GB of GPU memory just for inference. And when we use 4-bit precision, it takes just around 17.5 gigabytes of GPU memory, which is 72% memory retention, which is a lot of boost. Next, we can shard across multiple GPUs. So if you have multiple small GPUs, for example, if you have four or eight small, like uh, 16 gigabytes of GPU VRAM, you can shard the G model and uh, optimizers stage on multiple GPUs. So to do that, the only thing you are required to do is open the LoRa script, set the devices to the number of GPUs that your system has. So if you have four GPUs, just set that to four. And other things that you can do is basically the we use something called FSDP. FSDP is a, a distributed training strategy and it's for it was created by PyTorch. So LitGPT uses FSDP strategy for doing this, distributing the model weights and um, all sharding the model parameters and optimizer states. Uh, so you can also shard uh, activation check. You can also enable activation checkpointing and as well as you can offload the weights to CPU to even re further reduce the total GPU memory. So activation checkpointing is basically kind of when you do forward propagation, you calculate the activation, which is basically weights into input plus bias. That activation is usually stored, uh, but what you do is you discard that and recompute when doing the uh, backward propagation. So that, re that reduces the GPU memory by a lot. And CPU offload is basically, if, even if you have like four or eight GPUs and even that cannot reduce the total GPU memory, if you enable CPU offload, it will move some of the model weights to CPU. So you, it will have uh, further more reduction, but note that if you do CPU offload, it will come with a lot of slow uh, uh, speed up, like your uh, uh, training speed will slow a lot because uh, like you are going to CPU from GPU. So bonus point, uh, I you can also, after training, you can also um, evaluate your LLM on different evaluation tasks like truthful QA and other uh, tasks like um, uh, bull QA. And then you can see the benchmarks online, like uh, see the benchmark of uh, Llama 2, 7 billion, and see how much your trained model performed with the original model. So that's uh, so. All you need to do to, uh, in LitGPT is run this eval function. You can provide the checkpoint directory that you have just trained, and then whatever the task you want to evaluate on, and it will save the result to results of JSON or whatever path you provide. So let us now see um, with code how you can do all these things that I have just talked about uh, practically. So. I am going to open this uh, Jupyter Notebook. So what I have done is I have cloned LitGPT. So you can go to the LitGPT repository here. And you can just like get the URL from here and uh, do git clone. You can paste the URL here. Um, but I have already cloned it. So I will go to the LitGPT directory. Um, sorry. How do I remove this? Okay. Okay. So let me load the Dolly 15 k data set. Why is camera look active here? Okay, let's visualize our data. So you can see uh, I have uh, loaded the Dolly 15K data set and uh, it's in data frame. So I have the instruction, inputs, outputs. Note that some of the inputs will be empty 
because you do not need to provide context to model every time. For example, uh, you see this example, what, which is a species of fish, tope or rope, and the model should, should output tope. So not always you need, con you need to give context to a model. So that's why few of the rows for input will be empty or in any. Now we save only instructions, input and output to a CSV. Um, and then we run this script, prepare CSV. So it basically tokenized all our data set and it is going to process into train and test split and save it to the disk. And the destination path has been provided here as data.ecsp. So next, uh, default training. So what we are going to do here is we will train on default settings. Basically, we are not going to optimize anything at all. We are going to train on default precision setting, default uh, quantization, everything. And let's see if we can, uh, how much GPU memory it takes, uh, even if we can like train this or not. So I have executed the cell. So let's see what are in the logs. So it's going to use vFloat 16 automatic mixed precision. Uh, so basically, kind of has both of uh, 32 and 16 bit precision and yep. So the longest sequence length in the train data is 512, maximum sequence length is 512, context length is 4096. So by default, LAMA 7 billion parameter model has a context length of 4096 and we have reduced it to 512. So we have an error. Let's see what is the error. Yeah, CUDA out of memory. So as I told, if you do this on like without any optimization, you won't be able to train the model because it will it, it's going to take a lot of memory. So earlier this model was being trained using mixed precision, and it was it was not only just using uh, uh, 16 bit precision, but also 32 bit precision for few of the uh, operations. Now I'm going to use pure 16-bit precision, no mixed precision. So the model will only use 16-bit precision for training my model, training on my data set. So for, to do that, you need to provide this flag called precision. And let me run this. So this should be able to, uh, let me not too much optimistic, but I guess this should be able to, um, at least start my fine tuning because I I think I have 40 gigabytes of GP RAM, but we will we are going to reduce it to much lower number like 16 or like less than 20 gigabytes. I guess it will take 16 gigabytes, but you can um, reduce the sequence length even to like save more GP RAM and uh, distribute the training. Or it, yeah, so it is able to start the training. Cool, awesome. So let me stop this. Uh, I think, does it print anywhere? How much GPU RAM is it taking? Nope. Um, okay. So let me do NVIDIA SMI. Oh, let's leave that. Uh, so, Let's apply four bit quantization and as well as 16 bit precision and try to train this model again. And this time we will also see how much memory I'm going to utilize. So I'm spawning a terminal. It has loaded the model, validating few stuff before we start training.
cool um so let's see how much memory this is utilizing so i'm using this one so it's going to take 23 gigabytes of gp memory to fine tune with 4-bit quantization and let me stop this and again show you what happens if you do not quantize your model so let me run this script without any quantization again let me do nvidia smi again so i think it just has only loaded the model says 13 gb but i guess it will increase 13 gb i guess it hasn't started training yet yeah it's just validating so we will check again once it starts to um, run the training steps Disable school. Okay, so it has started training. Yep, it's taking 26 gigabytes. Uh, I guess uh, with four bit quantization, we were able to reduce it to 24 gigabytes. Cool. Um, so this will run for a lot of iterations, and um, to further reduce this. What we can do is we can set the strategy to FSDP and set enable checkpointing as well as enable CPU offloading. So let's go to the GPT to see how we can do that. Let's open the LoRa script in the fine tuning section and if you scroll down here, you have to basically, can I do this with setup? So you have to come here and set the strategy to FSDP. So by default, it, it switches to auto if you, your device size is like not greater than one but i have um, multiple gpus so i can set devices equal to two three or four and it will enable activation checkpointing and i can set this to true to even further reduce it but that will slow down my training a lot so i do not want to do that but um yeah um and the gist, it basically, um, in order to reduce your training speed, uh, you, in order to reduce your training GPU memory, um, what you need to do is these five steps. Reduce the micro batch size, reduce the mic, uh, model's con context length uh, or sequence length, um, then lower the precision, like if you are using 32-bit precision, lower it down to 16-bit precision use four bit quantization and you can if you have multiple gpus you can shard the model across multiple gpus so yeah so basically uh, this is all you need to do for um, to avoid out of memory um, good out of memory now uh, let me go back to the portal and um, i will address few of the questions first Okay, so I'll scroll to the top and start to answer questions uh, as I go uh, down the, to the new chats. This is a question from Steve. Um, the question is, I have a very specific question about the form of training examples and calculation of error function for finding LLMs. Specifically, does one provide rigid examples and expect exact reproduction of the examples output? That is, error is non-zero unless the output exactly matches the training example output word for word. So, yeah, basically, so what we do is um, 
you feed the input to the model, basically input tokens, and then you have the output tokens. So it's a decoder only model and the model generate some uh, tokens and based on the basically your y predicted value and uh, uh, your output ground truth you do cross entropy and that cross entropy loss is used to update the parameters of your model uh Moveen has Ask can you kindly provide the reference to the paper you just shared? I guess uh, you are asking about the benchmark paper. So that was coming from Laura paper. I will uh, share the link shortly. The next question is from Giorgios. How fine tuning helps to have control over the LLM in case of underlying foundational model is updated? So in case you use Llama, model uh, so in any parameter and you fine tune it then the people at meta launched a new, new llama model with updated weights then you will have to fine tune the new model again uh, otherwise uh, basically you will after fine tuning um, model a it will be a different model like uh, the new model from uh, launched from meta it will have completely different weights. So yeah, you will have to update it. Is this single task fine tuning or multitask? Um, this is a generative model and um, I don't, I did, I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question, but uh, what we are doing here is we have instruction input. Input is basically context for the model and output. And based on the uh, input and output, we train our model. Uh, one question is, can we see an example of the untuned performance and fine-tuned? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, I'll share my Jupyter notebook again, and I will show you, I will give some prompts to the query to the uh, base model. Um, actually, I don't think I have a um, checkpoint of a train model, but yeah, I think like, uh, I, I will show you uh, the weights, the output from a, train model, you can uh, try to get uh, download my notebook and then uh, train the model and see how much, uh, how is the performance of the fine tune model. Uh, how, uh, so what do you lose with quantization? Uh, Moveen Bhatti has, and Ray Grisha has this question, what do you lose with quantization? So obviously if you use quantization, there might be some loss of accuracy, but based on the QLORA paper, which is, I guess, quantized LORA, it is not, that much based on evaluations so and it also depends on use case so it's i guess better to train a uh, fine tune a uh, both and use the evaluation script to see how much you rank how much uh, the quantized and non-quantized uh, fine tuning model rank uh, marcus has this question if we use multiple gpus the gpus have to be the same model and memory or we can combine them if we use multiple gpus the gpu have the same model and memory or can we combine them yeah so if you multiple gpu so we use fsdp strategy by default and it will shard the model so it will shard the blocks of uh, some parts of your model architecture on multiple gpus so none of your none of the single GPU have the full model available to it, and um, that's how the whole FSDP thing work. How 
how much time would it run? So it really depends on the amount of data set you have. Um, I guess my colleague Sebastian had trained it, um, trained on Lura. He has a blog, uh, Lura Insights. I will share that. So I guess it took like one hours, one hour to train on using Lura technique. And I, I think he, it took like 26 hours. So run full fine tuning. So Lura wins here. What are the evaluation metrics that LegGPT offer? So LegGPT integrates LM eval harness from Eleuther AI, and it has a lot of, uh, I guess, more than 100 different tasks that you can use to compare benchmark. And LegGPT has also been integrated into Helm from Stanford, which is also another evaluation benchmark framework. So you can also use that to um, evaluate your model. Would love to get a copy of the network to try this out. So I guess as a lot of people are requesting. So what I will do is after this event, I will run the um, fine tuning, download, uh, copy the weights and upload it to driver somewhere so that you can just download it and try it on your own. What is your GP configuration? I was using 800, I guess 40, more than around somewhere around 40 gigabytes. Excellency choice. How long does it take to fine tune? Again, it depends on your data set. And I guess um, with Alpaca data set, it took like one hour. Another question is from uh, Eve. What is the distinction between lower pieces and four bit conservation? So, by lower precision, I meant half precision, which is 16 bit precision, and four bit quantization is like 16 bit and four bit, like half, like more than half of uh, 16 bit. So, when I say 16 bit, I am using lower, uh, like 16 bit precision as well as four bit quantization. So the four bit quantization is the for weights of the model, and the 16 bit precision is for calculation of the activation values. When another question is from Craig is when fine tuning the regular way and reducing batch size and other hyperparameters such as learning rate have to be adjusted half batch size half learning rate as well as as well to get similar fine tuning results are these guidelines for adjusting hyperparameter hyperparameter specifics to llms using lura so yeah so if you use LitGPT and if you have to adjust your batch size so we provide an argument called micro batch size which is a virtual batch size and an actual batch size is like 128, uh, 128. So it, it basically, it's something called gradient accumulation and it doesn't affect like the actual batch size. So if you want, you can, you are not able to set a higher batch size because of GPU memory, um, you can set a lower micro batch size number, even one, but effectively it will be 128. Can I share the link how you visualize the required memory earlier? Yeah, definitely. So I will share the slide, uh, the link to the slides and it is mentioned, uh, the source is mentioned directly in there. Um, how can we create your, our own data set? Is there any secret for that? I guess it depends on your use case. Uh, if you are building a chatbot, you can generate, you can like generate the data set by yourself or like uh, if you are working at a company, you can um, have the data set created within the company. Um, there are some open source data sets as well, like Alpaca, Dolly2 that I used, um, Code Llama, which is a data set for code generation. Uh, so if an open source data set uh, suits to your use case, you can use a, a pre-made data set as well. Will this fine tuning of the completion task causing catastrophic forgetting on the on other tasks like Llama to summarization? So um, yeah, that's a really nice question. Um, I haven't read about this, but since our original weights are frozen and we are 
training a new uh, set of parameters. So I guess um, the model should have its learning from the um, original frozen parameters. But if someone else like know if uh, the model can have catastrophic forgetting even with LoRa, feel free to share that in the chat. If VRAM of the GPU is the main issue, not the processing cost, why is the solution offloading to CPU uh, versus offloading to system RAM? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, so the question is if VRAM of the GPU is the main issue, why not move the parameters to system RAM instead of CPU? Um, to be honest, I don't know the answer, but um, I guess even the system RAM doesn't have doesn't come with a lot of memory. So and your CPU, you just will have much more storage. Will the slides and examples code posted? Yes, it will be. How do you create a data set for fine tuning? See Lama 2. I have lots of PDF on which I want to fine tune. Um, yeah, um, it's basically uh, you can create a CSV in instruction input and output and uh, based on you can have your instruction like a question based on your PDF and your PDF data can go into the input column. You can create it that way. Okay, so uh, one question is, can we have two different kinds of GPUs? For example, one T4 GPU, another V100 GPU, and we shard across them. Um, even if you can do that, your whole training will be limited by your slowest GPU, which is T4, which is much slower than V100. So I guess it will be uh, better to do on uh, same GPU, same kind of G hardware. Uh, question, are you fine tuning all the parameters or are you freezing all but the last layer? So I'm using LoRa and I'm not fine tuning the full parameters. Uh, I am freezing the all the pre-trained layers. I'm adding some extra parameters and I'm training those new parameters. The bandwidth to transfer data between system RAM and VRAM is extremely slow compared to CPU computation load. If I have thousands of PDF, it takes a lot of time to create output for PDF. Any trick to um, thousands of PDF it takes a lot of time to create out. So I didn't uh, get what you meant by um, create output for PDF. I think you can uh, like pre-process all the PDF and store it somewhere and then uh, start with the training. Why do the decoder have limitation on the input context length? So I think uh, this is how they are trained. So if you see the attention, ar attention architecture, um, they have block size or context length. And that basically, so Suppose if you have a row, if you have a like one CS, one row in a CSV, that's kind of a sentence or whatever you are going to feed to the model and expect the output. So all your words are based on time, T0, T1, T2, T3, like that. And the context length is kind of, it, it kind of basically, it is used to create the number of um, parameters when the attention architecture is being formed. Cool. Um, you have any thoughts about fine tuning embeddings versus fine tuning LLM models? Um, I guess. In the last few months, I have only uh, fine-tuned LLM models, not 
embedding. So I, I don't have much idea about fine tuning embeddings. So sorry about that. Cool. Um, I guess we uh, we have almost reached our uh, time, um, but we have three more minutes. So feel free to ask any questions if you have. In the meanwhile, let me share the resources that I have used. Um, so you can learn about FSTP on this blog, then Fine tuning LLM's blog is here. And let me share about how LoRa works as well. And let me show. So we are doing actively doing meetups all around the world, and uh, you can scan this QR code, and you will get the our meetup page. So you can you can RSVP to the nearest location you are in. Um, I will just give ten seconds so that you can all um, scan this QR code, or you can just take the screenshot and then later. Uh, check out the meetups nearby you so our next meetup is in london on 7th of november and in bangalore india on 7th of november cool um also you can connect with me on twitter linkedin and uh get all on discord i'll be lightning ai as a community discord channel and slack channel as well but we have mostly shifted to discord so uh, scan this QR code and it will have the link to a few of the resources and I will also add the link to the slides and uh, the code that I have used and you can follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, cool. Uh, so that's it. Also, Lightning AI is hiring so you can scan this QR code to um, get to the Lightning AI page and see if uh, there is a role for you. Cool. So that's all for my presentation. Thank you so much for all your questions and uh, hope you learn something, have fun.